Let me tell you something. I would never, ever buy a single Apple product or any of their accessories. I would never consider buying their computers, their old iPad, my thingy, my jigger bobs, their iPhone, their badoobalobs, or their accessories, or any of their watches, or anything at all. Not even the newest product, and that would be crazy just to get like the latest iPhone or whatnot, and all that stuff. For what? For what? And you know what? They got even these phones that don't even work properly. You just go. And then you go take a little bit of a bite out of it. Like. And then you expect it to work like a phone. And then you ring up the phone and go. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, how do I hang this up? Well, that bit was kind of, uh, but anyways, if you liked it, smash, destroy, obliterate that like button, and we shall talk about Apple and many other things. Obliterate, destroy, conquer, destroy, comment, subscribe, and that goes my mode of transportation. By 2006, the iPod sold over 42 million units worldwide everywhere, and it was a runaway success. No other company has competed with it. You got Samsung, you got a bunch of little things. Lego even had their own little MP3 iteration in about 2010. You had all these different competitors just competing for that music space because no one else had com perfected it like Apple did before and no one really did since except for maybe the zoom but we don't really talk about the zoom so i thought i'd make a video that breaks down the speeches of steve jobs and how he does it what's the magic behind it and i just want to say that he is probably one of the world's greatest sellers of all time the the field that we decided to do it in the choice we made was music now, why music? Well, we love music, and it's always good to do something you love. More importantly, music's a part of everyone's life. Everyone. Music's been around forever. It will always be around. This is not a speculative market. And because it's a part of everyone's life, it's a very large target market all around the world. It knows no boundaries. But interestingly enough, in this whole new digital music revolution, there is no market leader. It is important to tell and let the audience know and grab their attention at the very beginning by telling them why they should be interested in the product, why they are paying attention to you. So here he captivates the audience by creating intrigue. So right here is where you get the essence of Apple. You get what nobody has done before up to that point in 2001 nobody else has created something that is actually appealing to a wide audience that's intuitive and that's easy to use and here is where they begin to introduce the product which we obviously could probably hint that could be the ipod and here is where you start to see the drift where you see the excellence that goes behind him and the way he just speaks. It is intuitive and he spends so much time on it. He is absolutely convincing. He grabs the audience's attention. This isn't the best speech in my opinion, but it is certainly one of the most groundbreaking like announcements ever. There are small companies like Creative and Sonic Blue and then there's some large companies like Sony that haven't had a hit yet. They haven't found the recipe. No one has really found the recipe yet for digital music. And we think not only can we find the recipe, but we think the Apple brand is going to be fantastic because people trust the Apple brand to get their great digital electronics from. So let's look at portable music. Let's look at the landscape. The first thing, if you want to listen to music portably, you can go out and buy a CD, uh, CD player. right? That's one way to go, about 15, 10 to 15 songs. Or you can buy a flash player, go out and buy one of those. You can buy a MP3 CD player, or you can buy a hard disk-based jukebox player. 
These are the four choices for portable music right now. So let's take a look at each one of those. A CD player costs about $75, holds 10 to 15 songs on a CD. That's about $5 a song. You can go buy a flash player, pay about double that, about $150, holds the same 10 to 15 songs, or about $10 a song. You can go buy an MP3 CD player, and an MP3 CD, uh, which you can burn on your computer, costs about $150, but holds 150 songs. So you get down to a dollar a song. Or you can go buy a hard drive jukebox player for about $300. It holds about 1,000 songs and costs about 30 cents a song. So we looked at this and studied all these, and that's where we want to be. That is where we want to be. So here is where you start to get into what is he offering? What is his competitors doing compared to what he might be potentially offering, what he's leading into? So it's $5 a song through a CD, and then for Flash, it's about $10 a song, which is just a stupid amount for nowadays. And then you have the MP3 CD, which is about a dollar a song, which is far better and more typical to what the actual price is nowadays, not including like streaming services and all that. So then you have the hard drive, which goes as low as 30 cents a song, which is just stupidly low which for an individual song is pretty good pricing there is streaming now and that makes it unbelievably cheaper but that is essentially the basic idea of what he's doing he's lowering the price and he's trying to explain like what he's about to offer and lead into that and we are introducing a product today that takes us exactly there and that product is called iPod, iMac, iBook, iPod. What is iPod? iPod is an MP3 music player, has CD quality music, and it plays all of the popular open formats of digital music, MP3, MP3 variable bitrate, uh, WAV, and AIFF. But the biggest thing about iPod is it holds a thousand songs. Now, this is a quantum leap because it's your, for most people, it's their entire music library. This is huge. How many times have you gone on the road with a CD player and said, oh, God, the CD, I didn't bring the CD I wanted to listen to? To have your whole music library with you at all times is a quantum leap in listening to music. But the coolest thing about iPod is that whole, your entire music library fits in your pocket. Okay? You can take your whole music library with you right in your pocket. Never before possible. This is where the Steve Jobs effects kind of come in. This is where he kind of like makes that little bubble, that entrancing little thing where he uses all these big words. He's got you hooked, he's got you ready, and he's got you looking and paying attention to him full force. And your attention is pretty much all directed at him and it's really interesting the way he sets it up the way he builds that I mean look at that right there he just entrances you I mean just watching this just makes me want to go out and buy an iPod who won't want to have like their entire music library in their pocket of course this is all done today you can put it on your phone, carry it in your pocket, along with a bazillion apps, a whole bunch of photos, and literally the entire internet at your disposal. But like this for the time is just amazing. Imagine being in 2001 and being able to have this idea where you can hold all of your whole collection, your thousands of songs or a thousand songs just in your pocket alone and they managed to drive down the cost. This is a time where everything was down to really slow. Like one gigabyte of data of RAM was blazingly fast and that was just a huge ton. The air in that was just barely supporting video these days. So that's iPod. 
There are three major breakthroughs in iPod. Let's take a look at each one of them. The first one is it's ultra portable. So if we're going to keep a thousand songs on iPod and it fits in your pocket, how, how do we do this? How do we possibly do this? Well, we start off with an ultra thin hard drive. We've got a 1.8 inch diameter hard drive that's 0 0.2 inches thick, super thin. And that hard drive is five gigabytes in capacity. Five gigabytes, which holds a thousand songs at a 160 kilobit rate, which is a very high quality rate of MP3 compression. Very high quality. A thousand songs on this five gigabyte drive. And we've built in 20 minute skip protection. That's not, that's not 20 seconds, 20 minute skip protection. So you can take iPod bicycling, mountain climbing, jogging, you name it, and you're not going to skip a beat. So we've got this five gigabyte drive that holds a thousand songs. How do we get the thousand songs on to iPod? We don't want to wait. So we've built in Firewire. Now, Apple, as you know, invented Firewire. We should Firewire on every computer we make. It's built into iPod. It's the first and only music player with Firewire. Why? Because it's fast. You can download an entire CD into iPod in five to 10 seconds. An entire CD. So let's take a look at how it compares with USB. Five to 10 seconds for Firewire to load a CD. On a USB player, you're talking five minutes. Let's talk about a thousand songs now. On iPod with Firewire, it is under 10 minutes. On a USB player, it is five hours. Can you imagine that? You get your USB player, you want to load a thousand songs, you get to watch it for five hours while it loads the songs. Under 10 minutes with iPod. It's 30 times faster than any other MP3 player. So, huge win. Jobs at every point in time has always been about speed and usability. And this example of Firewire is a big leap in music players. Before him, it's all just, you put through USB, it's agonizingly slow. Then you put on the Firewire, it zooms a lot faster than previous music players. Because what he is doing, he is making better quality of life for the person and justifying what he's going to say about the price by just telling you how easy and intuitive this is going to be. How many problems is this going to solve? That's the essence of a business. What problem am I solving? Now, it doesn't matter how many songs you have with you if your battery's dead, right? So we have built in an extraordinary battery in the iPod. 10 hours of battery life, and that is 10 hours of continuous music. We're using a rechargeable lithium polymer battery. This is a more advanced battery than we even use in our portable computers. It's the most advanced battery we've ever shipped. And you can recharge this 10 hour battery in one hour to 80% of its capacity on a fast charge. One hour. But maybe the coolest thing is that, you know, Firewire, the Firewire cable carries all the data from the Mac to iPod, but Firewire also has power on it. And so when you plug in to your Mac, it actually charges the iPod over that single FireWire cable. So you don't have another charging cable to worry about. It charges over FireWire every time you plug into your Mac. Now you might say, well, what happens if I'm on the road with my iPod and I didn't bring my Mac with me and my battery's running low? What do I do? Well, we got a really cool charger that ships as part of iPod too. And this charger has a FireWire port on it. So you take your FireWire cable and just plug it right into the charger and plug it into the outlet and charge iPod wherever you happen to be where there's an outlet. So 10 hours of continuous music playback with a remarkable new battery technology. I don't know about you, but batteries have not really gotten too much better in terms of like the actual technology. Now they have gotten a lot better in terms of being able to use it more efficiently and all that good stuff. But I mean, 10 hours, you're lucky to get that on the phone in a lot of cases. Some you have like all day battery life and you have your oddballs here because that thing is 
thick, honestly. The first iPod was absolutely thick because it needed to have a better hard drive, better battery, and be able to like put in that little firewire thing to make it blazingly fast. It just played music, but it did it very, very well, which at the time was revolutionary. Now you might be saying, well, this is cool, this is cool, but you know, I've got a big hard disk in my, my portable, let's say my iBook. I'm running iTunes, I'm really happy, I got Firewire on my iBook. I don't quite get 10 hours of battery life, but iBook's got better, ba better battery life than any other consumer portable. So what's, what's so special about iPod here? It's ultra portable. An iBook is really portable, but this is ultra portable. <laughs> and let me show you what I mean iPod is the size of a deck of cards. A deck of cards. It is 2.4 inches wide, it is 4 inches tall, and it is barely over 3 quarters of an inch thick. This is tiny. It also only weighs six and a half ounces. That is lighter than most of the cell phones you have in your pockets right now. So this is what's so remarkable about iPod. It is ultra portable. We didn't stop. You know what's very kind of funny? Now we've kind of reverted back to where this deck of cards is still smaller and lighter than most cell phones even today because now we're just into a fad where it's not even a fad really everything's just bigger we just want bigger screens bigger phones and i don't entirely get why but it makes sense from a practical perspective to have more battery and kind of have more screen real estate but it is really interesting how they were able to do that back then where you could fit into this and have 10 hours of battery life, have it all about the size of a deck of cards, and just have it all fit in your hand just so well. There, iPod has got Apple design. We've got one of the best design teams in the world, and they have done a remarkable job. Uh, and let me show you. This is what iPod looks from the side. Again, about three quarters of an inch thick. I'm going to show you the back first because I'm in love with it. It's stainless steel. It's really, really durable. It's beautiful. And this is what the front of it looks like. Boom. That's iPod. I happen to have one right here in my pocket, matter of fact. <laughs> there it is, right there. Let me tell you, that is thick that is a big boy right there honestly but as almost like a brick this is where apple has an undeniable advantage over pretty much all of its competitors by having such great design schemes such great aesthetics that's a lot of the reason why people buy apple products because of the design and because of the product it just works it looks pleasing and it's easy to use. That is pretty much the whole essence of Apple right there. Why they are worth $1.4 trillion today. He is so remarkable at what he does. He will entrance you. Hopefully you see like that little effect he does there. He puts you in like this little bubble and he just keeps your attention. It is just remarkable and the reason is fully justified in its price tag by how easy it is to use and obviously selling about 400 million units over its whole lifetime i call that pretty successful but what do you guys think uh please comment down below on your opinion hit the like and subscribe button and smash that like button obliterate that like button hit that notification bell 